this? This big, whatever it is. I almost thought it was hung up for a second. Well, let's just make sure it's not a trout before I get too rowdy with it. Oh my gosh. If you love speckled trout fishing in Louisiana, then surely you've heard of Lake Ponce Trains Trestles and all the great speckled trout action that can be found there. But what exactly is this fishing spot and why is it so good? It all started well over 130 years ago when a man by the name of William Harris Hardy wanted to build a railroad going from Meridian, Mississippi to New Orleans, Louisiana. And the shortest route to get there was across Lake Pontchartrain. When construction of the trestles completed in 1884, it was made mostly of wood but has been upgraded several times since then to the present form you see today. And fun fact, at 5.8 miles long, the Trestles is the longest railroad bridge in the United States and the longest railroad bridge over water in the world. At the time, it was an incredible feat of engineering, but what Mr. Hardy could not have possibly known is what a great fishing destination this structure would eventually become. And that's because its many pilings break the current of Lake Pontchartrain and essentially function as an artificial reef that many baitfish like to call home. Many baitfish speckled trout love eating. This has led to incredible speckled trout fishing that inshore anglers have enjoyed for decades. In fact, I went out yesterday with my buddy, Captain Adam Shields, and we easily caught and released 44 speckled trout. And they're all waiting for you to come out here to catch them. It was a great day on the water, but fishing at the trestles is not always that easy, and there are important things you should know. So be sure to watch this video all the way through, and not just for the good catching you'll see here, but also for the good fishing tips and advice that you can utilize on your next fishing trip to this popular honey hole. We are here. <clears throat> Let's get a line in the water and we'll cover conditions. So the tide ought to be screaming in right now and that's exactly what it looks like, what it's doing. I can see the water wrapped around the pilings and I can feel it pushing against the boat too. I actually had to kick this uh, trolling motor into its highest setting in order just to move forward. And this is all great. This is all fantastic. Uh, hopefully it's going to be overcast, but it looks like it's going to be partly cloudy for a little bit. And water clarity doesn't look bad. It's kind of hard to tell because the sun is not. It looks good. Nice green, kind of clear. So the way I'm going to fish this is by casting to the pilings, letting that bait fall down to the bottom, boom, 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 jig it along the bottom, bring it back. I'm also going to make random casts out in the open away from the pilings too because there's a lot of debris on the bottom that serves to uh, break the current and speckle trout like to utilize that. Man, no way, that just that quick. Bam. <sighs> yes, what a good way to get the day started. Not a big speckled trout, not a big one. Okay, we're just out here to catch a lot of speckled trout, maybe even a limit. I'm just gonna double check him. This fish is so 12 inches, I'm just gonna double check him anyway. Oh yeah, all day long. Skunks out the boat. Back in the water you go. Let's catch your buddies. Oh, I'm gonna need that clicker too. Speckle trout number one. Man, what a beautiful morning. Absolutely beautiful morning to be out here. There we go. And nice one. Into the boat. Into the boat. Speckle trout number two. Back in the water you go, buddy. Dude, I catch a fish and a boat comes off plane right there. Like literally 
Oh, I just heard someone say Devin. What's up, man? It's, that there's fish out here really isn't a secret, you know? But, oh, man, he came back for it. Ooh, lost him right there the side of the boat. Oh, bummer, dude. Hang on, did I click in number two? Boom, number two, all right. Put a little shad spray on that so they commit to it a little bit more. Get rid of those nippy, nippy biting speckled trout. But that the trestles turns on during the springtime is no secret. There we go. Yes. This is a male, you can hear him croaking. Speckled trout number three. Get back out there. Oh man, nippy, nippy, nippy. What I really love about the trestles is that this is a place that separates the fishermen from the angler, from the guys who need a popping cork and live bait and an easy biting fish to catch everything, and then the guys who can throw a jig. If that offends you, I'm sorry. You should learn how to fish both. It's a lot of fun. It's very important that when you cast these pilings, you know where that bait went. You know, which corner, what side, so you know exactly where to cast back to if you need to, or if you didn't catch anything, to not cast back to it. Become that much more of an efficient angler. Probably the most deadly combination of fishing tackle and equipment you can use out here is exactly what you see in front of you, what I'm using right now. And that's a bass boat with a cable steer, foot pedal, trolling motor, casting tackle, and a little three inch swim bait, just a matrix shad on a three eight ounce ball jig head. And I say that because, <clears throat> oh, I thought, it, <clears throat> I thought I blanked there for a second. So I was like, I feel something going on at the end of that line. Bam, good eating size speckle trout. Going back in the water though. I already got plenty of speckle trout. I do not need any more. There you go, buddy. This combination of fishing tackle and equipment is good because I'm able to get my bait back in the water faster, more precisely. I got more power control over the lure and more power control over the boat. I'm not sitting here fumbling with the remote. I'm not sitting here doing anything other than putting the bait where it needs to be so fish can see it and bite it, getting good presentations on fish. I don't know, you tell me what you think in the comments below. So the technique here is to roll cast that bait out to the piling and let some slack out so that way the bait can fall straight down. If you keep that line tight, what that bait's gonna do is swing back towards the boat on the tip of that rod. But if they're slacking it, it can fall straight down. Sometimes those fish are right up against the pilings. So if that bait doesn't fall straight down to them and it swings on the tip of that rod over their head, they'll never see it. You'll never get a good presentation on them. Now I know that bait hits the bottom when I look at that line and it just boom, slacks out. When it looks like it just kind of uh, gives up, falls down. Then you know you're on the bottom. You can pop it up, let it fall down, pop it up, let it fall down until you think you're out of the target zone, reel in, cast back out. That right there, what I just explained, that's why people don't catch fish on the trestles because they come out here and they do this and, they, and they, let it, they let it get tight and they sit there and they start reeling like that and the fish never see the bait. Or like what I mentioned earlier, they cast out and keep their line tight, sit here and wait and it doesn't get to the bottom, it swings back towards the boat and they don't get a good presentation. Ooh, just got blasted right there. So we'll cast back out to that fish. Now I've had days out here, uh, I think one time with my buddy, Jamie, and I don't remember exactly what we caught. It was an obscene amount of speckled trout, but uh, by ourselves, uh, uh, we caught well over a hundred. Caught released well over a hundred speckled trout. And uh, sometimes what we had to do 
is, is cast back to that fish two or three times because they wouldn't really commit to the bite. They just, they would just like bite the tail of the lure and then let it go. Those are the days that really separate the men from the boys. Oh, that was awesome. That felt great. Whew. This is a trout, it's a nice one. All right, what is this? I was pulling straight down, man. <laughs> oh no, it's, a, it's just a blue cat. Hey buddy, yeah. Oh man, that catfish will slime up your line. That is why we have a floating flipper there, boys and girls. There we go. This is a trout ski. Yeah, boy. They're all about the same size. Number five. Uh, let's see here. And a speckled trout, number five. All right, buddy. Thank you. Ooh, you see it? You can see that line just jump. That was a good strike. Ah, oh, come on, fish. Come on, give me more of that. Mmm. Just gotta be little fish doing that. Gotta be a little fish. I won't catch him. There we go. What was I saying earlier about casting back to fish? Oh, and it ain't no little fish. No, and he's hooked in his chin too. Man, I hope this guy stays buttoned up. Oh, come on, stay buttoned up. Stay buttoned up. You're coming in the boat. You're getting home. Just pulled her egg. Yes! Oh, it feels good. That's a nice, that's a nice trout. That is a gorgeous Lake Pontchartrain trestle speckle trout. Hey girl, let's put you back in the water. There she goes. All right, that's speckle trout number six. So I just talked to a couple of my buddies that are out here and they are also having a tough time on the water. Uh, I don't know why today's like practically perfect conditions. I mean, it's only 7.54 right now. It's not even 8 a.m. yet. What we'll do to adapt to this is we're gonna keep grinding, not gonna give up. Try, keep fishing the pilings just like I have been, but also try fishing a little bit away from him, like casting behind the boat and uh, do some lure color changes and see what happens. That's all we can do. Bam, there we go, baby. Come on. <laughs> this is Speckle Trout number seven. Back in the water you go. Bam, oh, that feels good. Come on, baby. Speckle trout number eight. Oh, there we go. That was a classic speckle trout. Lake Ponce Train Trestles jig bite. Just absolutely awesome. Oh, it's a nice one. Oh, it's a nice one. <gasps> 
Dude, I'm telling you, these fish are barely tagging this bait. Barely tagging it. And they're strong. They're so strong. Okay, so maybe now we're putting something together. This is proof that sometimes you just have to embrace the grind. Back in the water you go. There we go, right in front of the boat, man. Speckle trout number 10, back in the water. Bam, baby. Back in the water. Yeah, this is a nice fish. See you, buddy. And yeah, speckle trout number 12. Now what I'm throwing here is a little different from what I was throwing earlier this morning. And it's uh it's really just the same rod and reel. But uh, a big difference here is that I just got nailed again, is that uh, this is fluorocarbon fishing line, 15 pound fluorocarbon. I would like to be throwing 12 pound, but I just don't have it spooled up. So what I have here is, you know, if you see this rod and these two rods, they're virtually all identical. There's a Tatula 100s on those rods, and this is a, uh, a Zillion SV on this rod, but they all have different kinds of fishing line or in different jig heads put on them. So it's very easy for me to experiment. I just need to put one rod down, pick the other one up. Ooh, Ooh. come on, let's do it. Like, man, if you feel anything is wrong or different with that fishing line, you just need to set the hook. Ho hook sets are free. That's not good. Backlash happens, it happens to everyone, but pull it out pull it out and get right back out there right in front of the boat nailed it right there man dude it's a nice fish absolutely hammered that bait down that's what we want to see we want to see them hammering down the bait just like that Speckle trout number 13. Going back in the water. It makes me wonder if she was following it the whole time. And then as I picked it up to retrieve it back to the boat, she got FOMO and went and hit it. I don't know. Here we go. Right there in front of the boat. There's just the lightest little tap, lightest little tap. If you think anything's wrong at all, you set that hook. Hook sets are free, man. Another nice late poncho train speckle trout. This is what we came here for. Mm. There you go, girl. So that's speckle trout number 14, which means that we are more than halfway there to getting a limit. I don't know what it is about catching a limit, you know, because if I caught like three, five pound speckle trout out here, that would be awesome, even if I had to grind all day for them. Uh, but I, I don't know, there's just some kind of mental block about catching a limit, right? If you can catch a limit of speckle trout, you're the man. So I don't know, what do you think? Tell me in the comment section below. Here we go. Hit it on the jig next to the piling. <gasps> and it came off. Bummer, dude. Right there. Oh, no. Come on. So you see, like, this uh, gentleman is trolling down the trestles, and uh, it'll seem like they get close, but they're really, they do a really good job of staying on the non fishing side of your boat. They're always like really cool and courteous too. It's just if you come out here and you haven't seen it before, it's a very normal thing. Now, is trolling a good technique? Uh, I think so. Some days uh, they do better than the guys who jig, and sometimes, some days the uh, guys who jig, like what I'm doing, do better. Just depends, man. Ooh, wow! Just got blasted right that. Oh, just got blasted right here in front of this fire break. Now. Once upon a time, this bridge used to be all wooden pilings. So, in order to prevent the entire thing from burning down in the event that it caught fire, 
they put in these fire breaks, which you can see it right here. It's just concrete that looks like a, it's like the part of the bridge that just looks a little different. So when you hear someone talking about the fire breaks, this is what they're referring to. One of these things. Anyway, I got a bite in front of this thing and I would like to get another bite. Well, that's the bottom. Man, I'm surprised this is the first time I got snagged. So what I like to do is to sit here and pop it like that. Maybe I can wiggle it off, that doesn't work. What I like to do is a bow and arrow trick. Just bam, try and pop it off there. While at the same time, oh, that worked and that got it off. If that didn't work, what I would do is just troll towards it and try and get over it and then get on the other side of the obstacle and then get the lure off it. That, that works almost every time. Sometimes it's, you know, there's a lot of timber and wood down there from the old trestles and sometimes that hook is just buried in that timber and that's it. Just gotta pop the line and retie. Man, I'm just sitting here grinding, doing color changes, just trying something. But like I said earlier, I have other, I got other buddies out, out here on the water and they're all struggling too, which I, I, I hate that. Like there's no reason why today should be tough. It should be, today should be great. Ooh, man. Nice. That feels good. Oh, it's a nice one. It's a nice one. Oh, look at that. Oh, she absolutely hammered that bait down. Whew. That's what I'm talking about. Let's get her back in the water. There she goes. Let's catch more like that one. Oh, 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 and that is speckled trout number 16. I, I, I'm pretty sure I didn't click in speckled trout number 15. I just don't, I don't know guys. I, I, I'm going to have to review the video and count it up and I hate that. I think that clicker is accidentally clicking itself. It is, it, I mean, it's been a while since I caught a fish. Like, I don't, I, I have no idea, maybe like 45 minutes or an hour. It's been a grind. Oh yeah. Right there, buddy. Oh, it's a little flounder. Buddy, you're too small. You're way too small. What are you doing? Go back. But what I'm gonna have to do is catch a few extra more to make me feel certain <laughs> that I got 25. If I even make it there, I don't know. It's, 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 gonna, be, it's gonna be tough, because today's kind of a grind. There we go. Yes, making it happen. Mm. Speckled trout, 17, but I don't think it's 17. It could be 16. I don't know. Another one right there. Bam, back to back cast, baby. Dude, this is a trout, it's a nice one. Holy shit. I so, oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Guys, that was a nice fish. I saw her. She, she was definitely, she was definitely over 20 inches. No doubt about that. This is how it's been. It's just, it's been nothing, nothing, nothing than bam, bam, bam. There we go. Boom. Yes. Yeah, she hammered that down pretty good. It's definitely a good sign. Speckle trout number 18. There you go. All right, let's do it again. And again and again and again. Oh, that feels good. Oh, come on. 
Oh, not that big. Not as big as I thought it'd be. Still nice though. It wasn't even a bite, it just, the line just started moving through the water. Speckled trout number 19. There you go, buddy. Thank you. Sometimes where I catch one, like there's another one right behind it. So I'm just trying to pick up that other one. Come on. Oh man, he was just sitting on it. The line just tightened up. There's no warning, blam. All right, so this is like speckled trout 18 or 20 or I, I don't know. I think my clicker screwed up. I already established that. Hopefully it's not. That'd be awesome. Mmm. Twenty. The key here is just to maintain focus. It's very easy to be like, uh, oh, today sucks. Oh, it's slow. Eh, whatever. In my experience, fishing by myself, taking people fishing, doing guided fishing trips and whatnot. Nobody ever remembers the grind. All people remember is what you caught and the fun you had catching them. So I cannot tell you how many days I've had where like we launched the boat at like 5 or 6 a.m. and it's 11 a.m. and we don't have a single fish in the boat, but then we just get on them and it's blam, 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 every cast action. I don't think that's going to happen here. But I do know that if I catch a whole bunch of trout, even if it's not all at once, that will still be awesome. And I personally will enjoy that. And of course it makes for a good video. I guess it all depends, but ooh, there we go. Come on. Oh, oh, oh man, that was like, the, that's the second or third fish that's come off at the side of the freaking boat. Anyway, I think it all really just depends on what it is you get out of fishing. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. Okay, I just got drooped. Just get this back out there. Bam. Dude, this, if this is a trout, it's a nice one. Nice, it's a decent trout. We'll swim down. Ooh, blam! I was I was daydreaming a little bit there. Oh. Picked up on him again and it came off. Fish came back for it, dude. I don't deserve this fish, given unreal, absolutely unreal. That's a good speckled trout right there on the jig, baby. Like, that couldn't have been the same fish. To hook up, it gets off, hook up again, it gets off, and then retrieving it back to the boat, it comes back and nails it. It has to be like the world's dumbest fish, and I just... <laughs> I just caught it, let it go, so you guys can come out here and catch it. What is this? It's big, whatever it is. I almost thought I was hung up for a second. Well, let's just make sure it's not a trout before I get too rowdy with it. Oh my gosh. Unexpected surprise of the day right here. Oh, what a beautiful fish. I haven't caught, I have not caught one like this in a, in a while. Look at my hand on that thing. That's a decent flounder right there. Hey, buddy. All right, well, this guy's gonna go back in the water because uh, I just don't plan on keeping any fish today. All right. Right there, right freaking there. All right. This makes speckled trout number 23. Nice fish. There you go. 
okay, the tide's starting to fall. And I'm thinking where I really need to be here for a falling tide is, is I don't need to be here. I like fishing the Highway 11 bridge on a falling tide. So let's go ahead and run over there and see what we can not get into. Yeah, I'm seeing some good bait around the piling, so this is this may be worth it. This may be worth a, a try. But the day is long in the tooth, and I'm definitely not going to spend all day here. And the water's falling nice and good here, so good. Fishing the Highway 11 bridge is really just the same thing as like fishing the trestles. You want to get that jig up in those pilings, casting upstream, and work it back to you. Oh, that was okay. That just bought this spot another five minutes. That was an awesome, awesome strike. Now I'm paying attention. I remember where I cast, so I put that bait right back in there. Hope, hopefully, to send it right back to where that fish is. Hopefully, there's more than one. There we go. Sparkle trout, baby. Bam. On the clicker, this makes speckle trout number 24. Mmm. What's up, man? Back in the water you go. It could be tedious, it could be repetitive, but it pays off. Get in the boat, little badass. Having to, to cast and pay attention to each cast and watch that line and make sure that bow drops out and make sure that bait's getting to the bottom and do it over and over and over and over again, it could be tedious, but it's paying off. Okay, so according to the clicker, this is speckle trout number 25, which is awesome, that's great, but I think I might have misclicked a couple times, so let's see if we can't catch them more just to be safe. Thanks, buddy. Got my lens wet. Ooh! That was just the tiniest little bite. So I get bit, and I'm gonna spot lock. I'm gonna stay put and just work them over, give them a few more casts. There we go. Oh! This fish are driving There we go, there's a fish. Oh, it's a nice one. Boom! Persistence pays off, man. And she absolutely, absolutely hammered that bait down. Mmm! All right, so this could be a uh, trout 24, 25, or 26. I don't know. I'm just catching trout right now. Oh, that feels good. Come on, fish. Stay buttoned up, baby. She's way out there in Timbuktu, man. She hit right next to that piling up there. There we go, nice fish. Nice speckled trout, yes. I absolutely love catching these fish on a jig. Oh. So however many fish it is that I caught today, I caught quite a few, I caught some nice ones, and I had a great time. And it's that good time that I want you to have when you go fishing for speckled trout on Lake Pontchartrain. So I'm hoping that the fishing tips and tricks that you found in this video help you to that end. Trout fishing in Lake Pontchartrain, especially on the trestles like what you saw today, can be really, really good, but it doesn't last forever. 
fishing conditions will change and patterns will shift. And when they do, you're not gonna catch speckled trout at the trestles anymore. And if you wanna catch those fish when they move, it's very important that you're able to find them on your own, that you understand these conditions and the equipment and tackle that you need to use to adapt to them. Doing it that way is a lot better, a lot more fun than waiting for someone on Facebook to tell you where fish are at. All this knowledge and more is what I provide in the form of fishing courses on my website at lafbelite.com. Courses like Inshore Fishing 101, Inshore Fishing 201, Sight Fishing Mastery School, and more. If you'd like to learn more, just visit lafbelite.com slash join or use the link in the video description below. Anyway, what was your favorite part of today's fishing trip? Tell me about it in the comments. And if you enjoyed this fishing trip, you already know what to do. Thanks for watching and tight lines.